So what have you taken from like Bristol in terms of the graph? Oh, okay. Um, I mean, we didn't get to see much. The mo most of the stuff we saw was over by uh, Stokes Croft. But I uh, definitely like what we saw, what's going on here, you know, that whole vibe with all the buildings getting painted and, and it seems like stuff is happening here, you know. Yeah. And then now after this event, I think people are going to take more notice of what's happening in Bristol. Bristol got it going on right now. Yeah, yeah like so. when, when we came here and it gave us like a tour, and you, you noticed that there was a lot of artists, you know, doing different type of art form. You know, you had like the stencil artists, you had your paintbrush artists, you had your graffiti artists. And at the same time, they was mixing the media. It's not like one person was doing just strictly spray can and one person was strictly paintbrush. It's like a mixed media they were using. And that was dope because you don't really see as much, you know, in all the places that, you know, that people paint. And, and after the event, everything happened and during the event we noticed that younger you know kids up here in this neighborhood was also doing like the parents were actually showing like um different um artists like yeah you could do this you could do that and, and that was dope like you know back when we was born you know like in new york you know you know our parents didn't like really support us like in grab you know they were like no don't do it no more it's bad you know, the media was really bad here the media uh, you know spoiled you saw the mayor came down Support it, so it's good, you know. Like this, I think this is a place that is definitely gonna move on to like greater in art. Okay, okay. So, um, did you see in any of the younger people and stuff like that, like a little bit of your influence and things? Obviously, you're from like an original generation in terms of the graffiti, and like you got a chance to see like a lot of different things come together at once. So, can you still see that old school element in things, or do you think that it's completely kind of shifted and it's just transforming now? No, I think, I mean, it's definitely transforming. The styles that we saw, like, they're like on some other level, they're like different, you know, it's definitely taking a change from, you know, what I guess people consider traditional, you know, New York lettering and stuff like that. It's definitely evolved into other forms. And like you said, using different techniques, different mediums and all that stuff. So. You know, it, it, it may have gotten influence from that, but they've definitely taken it to another another level. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you can see it. You can see it in how the style has evolved, even from the new painting. Like, we're always trying different techniques just because we're watching the younger generation. So, it's a learning curve. So, everybody's continuing. You know, everybody that participates in this art form is always pushing the envelope. So, everybody's constantly learning from, you know, what someone else is doing it and trying to take it to the next level. That's what the art form is all about. It's just Moment. Yeah, okay, okay. And so, like, in terms of um, basically having, like, an actual career in, in what it is that you're doing, like, I, I mean, I don't know, how long has it actually been, like, a career for you? Like, not just that hobby that you're doing, and um, uh, in terms of that change, yeah, is that a good? A career, we've been doing it professionally for about 16 years. We've been painting 30 years, but, you know, as a business for about the past 16 years, it's something that we, we do, you know, day in, day out, go in. You know, just like a job for us. You know? yeah. Part of what we do is our personal painting. Then you also have a lot of the commercial side and commission jobs that we do. I mean, obviously, so many we fight every day, but it's all good. I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just the way it goes. You know, we know that we we argue, but our arguments are silly arguments. They're not like major arguments of anything. You know that is of significance, it's just like something stupid and then we move forward because there's a bigger picture, you know, we know at the end of the day there's a bigger picture. Okay. Yeah, because we've been painting for so long that I think we might be almost like 30 years, so we might be like maybe the only three that's as a group yeah. in graffiti, because a lot of graffiti artists, you know, after a while they break up because, you know, to really make yourself like do and really become an artist, you know, you have to do it full 100%. You just can't say, you know, I'm a graffiti artist, then you go home or you go to the next job and work 40 hours a week. You know, you really got to give it 110%. It's not like, you know, like, you know, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. You know, you can't, you can't, it can't be like that. So for us, you know, being together for so long, you know, and, and then just leaving our job and just doing, making this happen, you know, it really, like, you know, we don't want to go back to work for anybody else. We really want to, like, really do that something that we love to do, and that's paint, you know, like, and do artwork and continue doing what we're doing. I think, um, I think I hope we left a good impact here, you know, and, and I, see, I see for people to realize that, you know, like, it's not, 
it's not for everybody, you know. Mm. Like only a few is gonna make it. You know, like you know, like you know, I don't care if it's one say, not everybody's gonna make it. You know, it's just a few, you know, one that's really special, that's really dedicated, you mm. know. Like, you know, don't mind being broke for a whole week for you know, for a whole month, you know, because they wanna do the love of craft or the love of art or whatever they wanna get into. And I think for us we were fortunate that you know, it's all in our lap and we took it and you know, we were broke. And at the end of the day, you know, we made it happen, and, and you know, I think it's a great day. You know, like you really, you feel better. You listen to your own music. You dress the way you want to dress. Mm. And and at the end of the day, you happy. You know, you happy that you know that God gave you a gift, and and we can use it and share it to the community. Like you know, a lot of people came up to us saying, you know, I love you guys' work. You know, how much dedication you put into your work, and it's like. It's already part of me, you know. I, I love this event, you know. It's just it's something that I'm gonna continue doing for the rest of my life, and I hope everybody can enjoy what we're doing. Okay. As, as a team, as a group, you know, as as task crew. So you're leaving through London. What's your last plans for just England? Your last little touches? Uh, I mean, we're gonna hit up London. Probably go do something in the Hall of Fame over there, Stockwell. And then uh, got a few days left, I don't know, maybe sightsee or maybe just do another walk. Depends, let's see, figure it out once we get there. Cool, cool, cool. No real plans. Nice old one. I'm Nysa from Taz Crew. My name is BG183, Taz Crew. What's up, I'm Bio from Taz Crew. Last man standing. <laughs> Peace. I go by El Mac. Um, I'm from LA. Phoenix, LA, and uh, I'm here in Bristol, and just wrapped up painting a big mural for the uh, the Sino Evil event. Nice, decent sized mural, it's like six stories up. Pretty good. So, so I mean, what do you um, what do you reckon of the Bristol scene then, uh, compared to Europe and other places in America and around the world that you've been? Seems like like Bristol knows how to party. You know, it seems like people get down out here. Um, I mean, to be honest, you know, I, I, I mean, it's my first time in England, and the whole time I've been here, the whole, you know, five days I've been here so far, I've been pretty much stuck up on this lift the whole time painting, but, you know, but the time that I have spent, you know, hanging out, meeting people, and, and from what I have seen, you know, it looks like a pretty, pretty cool place, you know, it seems like the culture is real strong here, and, you know, people are pretty, pretty supportive of art, you know, I mean, I, Obviously, a lot of people are familiar with Banksy and the whole street art thing. You know, I guess I can kind of see how that really is, you know, a big part of the culture here. You know, obviously, with what I do, you know, obviously, I mean, it, it seems like a very inviting place, you know. So, yeah, no, it's good to be here, and, and I'm, I'm excited to, you know, maybe see some more of the city, and, you know, check it out in the next few days. Okay, so we were just chatting to Tatsu, obviously, um, like an uh, older gem from New York. What was your sort of inspiration like from where you from in LA? Right. Uh, well, you know, I, I mean, I mean, I think most graffiti writers would probably tell you that it's, it's the older cats from New York that, you know, were a big inspiration for, for, for them, you know, for a lot of us. I mean, you know, these guys were kind of pioneers, you know. I mean, I... I get a lot of my inspiration from this fine art, you know, a lot of the older classic, you know, painters like, you know, the old European, you know, Caravaggio and, and Vermeer and some of those dudes, you know, Mucha. But then when it comes to graffiti, you know, guys like these guys, you know, the Task Crew and, and you know, uh, Dondi, Case 2, Phase 2 and all those, you know, Futura, all the classic New York guys. And, uh, and you know there was some classic, you know, like like Moat was from from England, you know, and he, he was he was one of he, he was from the, the older generation, you know. So yeah, a lot of a lot of the older guys, guys that came out of the 70s and 80s, and then from the West Coast, you know, they, there's a really strong scene and strong history there too, you know. So you know, I think a lot of people were probably made aware of uh, Hex, Hex and Slick, you know, they had you know big impact in the 80s and, uh, you know, especially uh, Hex, I guess, as far as, like, painting realism and stuff. And, uh, you know, also, uh, like, Chaz, Chaz Bohorquez from L.A., he's really uh, kind of 
kind of a legendary, you know, uh, uh, sort of cholo calligraphy painter. And uh, yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> um, so obviously coming down and doing the event, uh, See No Evil, mm. you see like a, a lot of different people, a lot of different generations coming together in one thing. So kind of what's your, your view on some of the newer stuff? Like is there anything that you've seen that was a bit kind of like, okay, stretching the mark for you a little bit? From this event? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't feel like I've, I haven't even fully seen everything that's been painted yet. You know, I, I, I saw some of the stuff on, on the main street, and I'm actually probably going to head over there in a little bit, you know, check it all out, take some pictures and stuff. You know, most of the time I was there, I, like I said, I was kind of caught up in the crane, but but from what I did see, you know, there's, there was definitely a lot of talent, you know. Um, I don't even know who half these people are. I saw some pieces at the end of the street that looked really, really nice. They said that, you know, there were some guys from France, so I want to go back there and check those out. And, um, who else? Some guy named Smug, I think, did a piece. It was pretty. It was like it was like some photorealism, real like airbrush looking. It was some guy with his like dentures flying out. That was cool. Um, you know, Arrow arrows from here. He, looks like he did a pretty pretty dope piece. Um, well, you know, Nick Walker went big. You know, he did the the, the tower piece. It's like 10, 11 stories up. That was pretty cool. Um, I gotta go back, I gotta check it out. <laughs> and so like, yeah, you were saying like you're working with the lift and that sort of stuff. So how do you find that like integration between using like that sort of machinery, but obviously doing the sort of details that all of the artists have had to do? How do you find that personally, that little gel? Uh, you know, using a lift is just, it's, it's a tool that allows you to work on a bigger scale, you know, and it, and it has a lot of, uh, difficulties that come along with it slows everything down you know you, I mean you're moving like large distances and it you know kind of slows things up plus it makes it hard to, to see what you're doing you know when you when you paint something that's maybe just a story or two stories high it's a lot easier to just kind of stand back usually and, you know and for me what I do you know where I'm painting faces and it's pretty representational and and lifelike, you know, getting the proportions is really critical, you know, for my style, you know. So if I paint a face, the nose and the eyes and everything better match up, you know. So if something's off, it's going to look really bad, you know. So it's like, it's pretty critical. So painting at that scale is a little tricky, you know. And sometimes it's easy to lose sight of what you're doing because you're a foot away from it or two feet away from it the whole time. And, uh... You know, it's a little tricky, but at the same time, I mean, it pays off because if you can work it out and figure it out, then you, you, know, you can paint on a whole nother, whole nother scale, you know, literally. You know. Okay. I mean, this one here was, you know, like six stories up or four stories. I mean, it was, it was a decent size and it was like, it allowed me to paint a lot more because my style, you know, I, I just use fat caps. And, you know, it means that it, it basically means I have to paint big. You know, some people, you know, use their own, you know, they, they use other techniques where they're using little skinny caps and it's more of a kind of airbrush style, you know, and they can paint these little tiny pieces with little details. And I have full respect for that, but my particular style that I like doing is much more, you know, larger, you know, much more physical and stuff. And, you know, you have to be a little faster. So the bigger you can paint, the bigger the canvas, the more you can do. So, yeah, it, I love it. You know? Okay. And so obviously, um, the See No Evil is finished now, but obviously these pieces are going to be up for quite a long time and um, it's going to have a, a lot of impact on the city. So, I mean, um, how... How do you feel about kind of graffiti getting to that stage where obviously now it's accepted and mm -hmm. you know I mean somewhere like the Bristol City Council would actually pay for all of you lot to come down and do this right, sort right, of right. stuff? I mean, I, you know, I can't help but think it's a good thing. I mean, obviously, you know, I have my own personal interest, which is this is something that I love to do, and so anything that helps me do that, I'm all for it. But even if I step outside of my own perspective, I just think it's actually you know, I genuinely think it's a good thing for people in general, you know. Uh, 
it's just a way of kind of uh, it's 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 if you do a good job and you do good work and you have passion for what you do and you work at it and you work on your craft whether it's pieces tags even letters stencils wheat paste whatever it is that you're doing you know if you get good at it and you work at it and you put some heart and soul into it and you put it out there you know i i think you're you're kind of doing a service in a way you know maybe not everything i'm not standing by everything that anybody does and puts out there on the street because I, I think a lot of people don't really you know I, I think a lot of people kind of phone it in but I think the people that really have some, some skill and talent and heart you know I think it's great you know I think it makes cities more livable you know I think people say oh well, there's you know you go to these big cities and there's tagging stuff everywhere you know it looks like it's lawless or something you know and I look at that and I see well yeah, I mean, the stuff that's ugly, you know, it doesn't mean I like it either, but then the stuff that is good, it's like it's showing you, like, there's life there, you know, and that's important, you know, cities can be pretty, pretty rough sometimes, so when you do see that people are putting a little bit of time and, and, and talent into the, you know, onto the streets, I think it's a great thing. Thank you very much for that one, yeah. nice one. No problem. So yeah, that's the video footage, isn't it? Oh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah,